All right. Well, welcome to this episode of Twin Peaks. Uh, we're still in the the mid season two. Uh, we just had a huge episode um, that we talked about, um, arbitrary law, which was the turning point with uncovering the mystery behind who killed Laura Palmer and uh, a demise of one of the main characters, um, Leland Palmer. So. Yeah, we I had a lot to say about that episode, so definitely go watch that. And um, you're picking up when we're watching the episode 10, Dispute Between Brothers, it's called. I don't know if you recall. Um, I do. Okay, so we. Uh, I'm really excited to jump into this episode. I hope you guys are too. Yes, we just um, were, yeah, we were just talking about that. Okay. After well, we... You, after we just got done with one of the like more peaksiest episodes up to this point, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. uh, it's a it's a great uh, time to be watching this show. It's cozy still. It's it gets you excited to watch the next one. I mean, I just hope it keeps getting a little bit more. I mean, I hope it doesn't wane with enjoyability because leading up to that episode we just watched, yeah, it was kind of teetering on like I don't really. Uh, I hope yeah, it gets, hopefully pretty, this gets somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it, biding yeah. time and building. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're we're in the mid fuckabouts. That's true. Just, I I do no. I do think no. that it will start to be, continue to be more interesting because we just had the return of uh, Major Briggs, and we had the spooky owl last time, and yeah. James going off and doing his thing. I don't know. It seems like... And Albert showed up for a little bit. I mean, that was kind of cool. Albert, Albert was there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Definitely subscribe for, you know, content that we create for Twin Peaks, our discussions. Um, we did talk about doing some bonus things after we finish up this, this season, and then when we get into Fire Walk With Me, we're going to look into some of the featurettes and these little behind the scenes and deleted scenes and things like that, that uh, is available to us that we can review and comment on and things like that. So stay tuned for that. If you have never seen that, I would uh, hit that notification bell to be notified when we will discuss that stuff. Cause you never know what discussions we could, uh, we could have talking about some of that, that stuff that uh, they produce for CBS or whatever. Uh, uh, little commercials or the log lady intros and things like that. Um, it's it speaks for itself. Yeah, we don't even, we don't even have to say anything. It, it speaks for itself. Well, that's true, but the discussion that could come out of it, it's uh, it'll no, be good. I I just think I just think it'll do its own thing. You know, we we can just let it percolate. Sometimes it, we don't need to be involved whatsoever. We can be hands off. Well, nonetheless, um, hit the like button if you want to uh, continue watching more of our Twin Peaks content. And uh, you'll definitely be notified when uh, we produce more of these or when these come out. So hopefully they they come out every week. Um, Sometimes it's hit or miss depending on our schedules and stuff like that. So it's always good to just hit that notification bell and uh subscribe so we're gonna jump into episode 10 dispute between brothers those siblings are fighting get me back to brown that's so brown it's like they shaved some bark off a tree so thinly that you could see through it and they just put it over the lens. That's how I gave it a very natural look. Bark film? Bark film. Bark films. It sounds like a dog production company. Wow. What an ending wow. there, huh? Yeah. You know, for spookums. That was definitely a spooky ending. Um. So yeah, what do you guys think about this episode after that last one, Arbitrary Law? 
I liked it. I mean, there was, there was a, quite a few things going on in the episode, but I like they kind of, it was kind of one of those kind of, um, like I was saying when we started watching it, how the, the funeral kind of served as a launching point for us to kind of check back in with people we haven't seen in a minute. Yeah, true. So that was kind of cool. Saw a bunch of people we hadn't seen for a while. And then like, you know, and, and you kind of just getting some, some of what's been going on in their life or what's starting to happen. And then, um, and yeah, Dale, you get you see the little, little hiccups that happen. You think he's out, yeah. but then, you know, some things happen and kind of pulls him back. Um, yeah, I, I liked it. And then of course, it's the real peaksy ending right there too. Yeah, definitely. Wilson. It may, it, it may not have had as many. It may not have had as many like super big moments like the last episode, but I thought that this was a really good way to like settle back in. Like Eric was saying, like we got the funeral at the beginning to like check in with people, and then it was kind of like, all right, we had the like big drop in of the of the big moments episode. Now we're settling back into our routine of like yeah. scenes of the double R. And like at uh, One Eyed Jacks and shit, like yep. following back to these... life at Twin Peaks. Yeah, <laughs> bewildered Pete. <laughs> Nadine going to high school. Yep, that was interesting. <clears throat> Bobby trying to get a job or kind of blackmailing yep. for a job. Yeah. Um, Attempting to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. That was perfect. Um, yeah, these uh, side stories are kind of interesting. Uh, Leo kind of started moving around on his own. Yep. Um, yeah, Catherine talking to Sheriff about uh, the situation that happened and trying to explain it. Because, yeah, she hasn't made herself known to Sheriff Truman since the fire. Um, so yep. I, I don't. Busy it's... masquerading as an Asian businessman. <laughs> right. Yeah, she, she conveniently leaves that part out like, oh yeah, I yep. survived the fire. She, she she that's the thing is that she's very honest about what actually happened in the fire, but then she just very conveniently leaves out what happens after the fire when she poses as an Asian man. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Probably figure that one wouldn't hit as good as the rest <laughs> of that story. She's like super honest about the actual fire. She's like, no, nah, I was at home. I got this call. I went there, blah, blah, blah. Well, I like the conversation she had with him because she talks about a guardian angel. And I thought that was kind of yeah. profound. Or it, was, right. it was a little bit of a a nice thing for her to come to terms with. Like, I was meant to do that. I was meant to go save this girl and, you know. How, how was it that they got out of the fire again? She didn't recall she couldn't recall so who's to say that like maybe maybe some like supernatural force or something did help them yeah right. you could lead like yeah you can read into that a little bit and um yeah it, it was kind of powerful that you know she was talking about this and it was like meant to happen and because that anonymous phone call for her do we know who that was uh, no, if we do, we don't yet. Like, if we find out, we don't. We didn't yet. I don't think. Okay. Did didn't did we not see the person on the other end? Or she just got a phone call and it was like, <clears throat> go to the mill. It's gonna burn. I forgot. I mean, I that's you one thing it. that kind of. Well, Bracho, I'm pretty sure you might have been sleeping. But yeah, <laughs> so I forgot. <laughs> I I I've still well, seen this episode. If I just if I fell asleep during. The episode this time, I, I still saw it like ten years ago or whatever. Right, but there's, I, there's I, I'm, I don't know because it, it probably escaped my mind too because I didn't really care to notice that part. I mean, there's I, also been so many events that have taken place between like right now and back then. That's why we yeah. needed yeah. this kind of episode, like Broadshow's saying, is like to kind of catch up with some of these people that we've kind of stopped, set the stories aside. Yeah, for we set their stories aside and. Do you, do you know what up. I think says a lot about this episode specifically? Is the title is where it's like dispute between two brothers. It's like, is that really the biggest thing to like call out in the title? You know, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I, like we, we truly are settling back into just like <laughs> life back in Twin Peaks. If that's the biggest event of the episode. Yeah, it's like the biggest conflict that happened um, almost because like these guys are going at each other's throats, you know, and we want to punch each other out. The Milford brothers. And what I found on... Uh... Look at Donna, she's trying to steal the corn away. <laughs> Give me the corn. You're going to drop this. <laughs> she sees the two old men starting to fight, and she's like, ooh, my chance to get corn. Hell yeah. Um, what I found out is, reading the, the Wikipedia, is that they didn't have titles for these episodes when it first released. It's only when the show went to be aired in Germany is when they started naming the episodes. Interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. <laughs> so then so, they came up with names. Liam's just sitting there, just being like, "The two brothers fighting." That's the name of the episode. He watched the first ten minutes it's of the episode. He's like, brothers. "Ah, dispute between brothers." Yeah. Arbitrary law. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, this episode the was. In the back. Oh my god, there's just an extra back there. <laughs> I've been noticing that too. Yeah, that old guy back there with the wine glass. <laughs> well, there's a good one. <laughs> there's another one I'm seeing. Hello. Uh, the slap. The posture for the slap right here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I recognize Tony J, the voice actor that does uh, Frollo from Hunchback and other video game things. And he has yeah, such a. Video deep voice kind of like a christopher lee almost mm -hmm. i think he probably did play like uh i think it, there might have been some crossover where he played the same character as christopher lee at some point <laughs> and uh the doctor look, look at the lead <laughs> <laughs> yeah Both the doctor has dog. such a blonde head of hair there <laughs> uh -huh. looks very bleach blonde like I just came back from <laughs> surfing. Yeah, what's up with that? They're just like barely sticking out. He looks so weird. I love you, Pete. Like, I love you, Pete. A, the doctor's at like a 15 degree angle and then Pete's <laughs> at like a 35. It's like the perfect little increase. Get this there. doctor away from me, Harry. He's mimicking everything I do. <laughs> He's making a weird little face. And then Coop is just like, ah, Twin Peaks. I can't wait <laughs> to go quaint. pee outdoors. <laughs> I'm going to micturate outside. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, overall, the episode <laughs> was... <laughs> Every time. There's some, there's some good scenes, I would say. It wasn't, you know, obviously, towards the end, it got to be like, okay, cool. Another mystery that we have to uncover here. Um and we'll get to that. But yeah, there's a, a lot of these little scenes were kind of interesting. Like Andy being the bigger man, being like, whatever happens, we're in this together. And then Hawk's just like, are you fucking kidding, Andy? <laughs> Basically, he wanted, to, he wanted to slap Andy like right up in the face. Um, Hell yeah. Mama didn't want no fussing. And then we got the green-butted skunk or whatever. Yeah, the green butt skunk, dude. Green butt skunk. And here's where the conflict starts happening, is when another agent from the FBI shows up with a Canadian Mountie to uh, depose Agent Cooper about the situation at um, uh, Jack, uh, One-Eyed Jack's, and how there's some dead bodies in that. Uh, Mountie was claimed to be undercover and doing during... Uh, the monitoring of that, he found out that that was Agent Cooper dis in disguise and then contacted, obviously, the FBI, and now they're taking away his badge and his gun. Um, but, but after, yeah, uh -huh. they talk about how he, this guy was killed, right? They were saying, like, you killed this man? Or were they yeah. like were they saying he killed him until they no the, no they were they were saying that like he went across the border and did unauthorized like reconnaissance and all yeah. the things yeah yeah out oh, of his that led to death that led to people dying that led to shit like that okay yeah 
So they're not blaming him but, on the death of Jean Renault. No, because Jean Renault's still alive. Right. I thought that was well, going to be like a revelation in this episode. Like, he was never dead? No, the guy that's the Mountie is is not a Mountie. He's he's a goon of Jean Renault's posing as a law enforcement figure, fooling this FBI agent so that they can frame Cooper with, like... So, that's a real FBI agent, but the Mountie is this same dude here. This is us finding out, oh, he's actually... A henchman of Jean Renault. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense so, because he's so he's he's gonna dressing take some up of this coke. Mountie. Yeah, he's gonna take some of this coke and then Don't we like, all? use the cover of the Mountie to help plant it on uh, something of Dale's to get him in trouble with the real FBI while they're in town. Right. So that uh, was also an interesting. Uh, seem to happen because then we can bring in these uh these other dudes that were getting really uh rambunctious here um yeah, that they're gonna be the drug runners for this this dude now <laughs> they spent most of the scene being out of breath just wrestling wrestling with each other <laughs> wrestling with girls and then each other it's like we're totally not gay we're totally not gay we were holding these ladies holding these ladies and then the second the ladies leave they start like getting really on each other like oh they're gone Hey, buddy, now that they're gotta gone, let me grab that. you. <laughs> I'm lift you up. That pent up energy. Yeah. Let me kiss you, computer man. I'll kiss you, computer man. <laughs> I'll kiss you, computer man. <laughs> um, so other than that, um, there is a lot we can talk about with this final scene here where they're obviously they went fishing and now they're just kind of chilling at the, the fireside and talking about Bob and the nature of men, things like that. And then the evil in men and how there's evil out there and things like that. And then uh, we start hearing rustling and he's like, I got to pee all this coffee gets, it gets to me, you know? And so he goes out and then we start hearing owls. And if you remember at the last frame of the last episode was a owl coming right at the the lens yeah so we're meant to believe that bob is just somewhere out there in the in the wilderness we we see bobbing right here we see the owl like that's supposedly like very close to or right above dale right he's like huh what's that you watch me piss bro well hearing hearing the calling of the owl seeing that pov shot and then having this it just leads me it makes me feel like they're trying to communicate that like yeah that's probably bob right there yep in the fucking in that owl and then he sees bob in a duster looking like it looks like a well yeah, bob in a like, duster i don't know if that is bob he's yeah he it's if it was bob he'd be wearing a jean jacket right and like so it, it could be any shape. Because because they're hiding it, I think it's just meant to be like a supernatural figure, maybe of the White Lodge, since they were just talking about it, and that's like supposedly where Major Briggs goes. That's true too, yeah. Like and what is is Cooper seeing something here or is just being like he's just completely I think, gone? I think he is. I think he's just like kind of um so yeah, I think he. I think he is seeing something. He's seeing like maybe just the after effects. Like Mayor Ma- Major Briggs has just uh, disappeared, but he's seeing like, you know, some sort of like after image of him disappearing, or like, you know, the the tail end of the effect. Right. Is what it seems like. Yeah, it it is what it seems like, and those flashes that we saw in the last episode too. It's reminiscent of that too, when everything went static and Mm -hmm. everything stood still in time. Are we supposed to think like whenever there's flashes like that, the white lodge is, is like making an impression in the world somehow, or was that just to be like, there's lightning outside? I think, I think, yeah, last time it was just that like a, a, a stylistic thing, maybe B for the like lightning, but like, it was just like each time that it was freeze framed on them, it was super lit as to be like 
um, a like very simple broad strokes kind of like hey we're really gonna highlight what's in the frame like really drive it home all these individual people they're here what's what's going it was like building up almost yeah because it was Mm -hmm. about to reveal for leland that's true so and yeah there was that effect of there was lightning or rain outside and things like that so it lent to that stylistic choice to be like oh we should just you know have a flash frame of whenever the lightning strikes to just pause in everybody's face in time. But this is like, uh, it's in motion. It's not, you know, it's not still. He's looking and he ran after the light. He saw the light. Major Major Briggs is being abducted. So, like, whether that's by aliens or he's just, like, walking into a portal and, like, or he's just, like, you know, phasing out of existence. I don't know. We don't see it. But, like, there, there seems to be some sort of light that is emanating from this event. And in the in the secret history, one of the the Milford brother, in his Boy Scout troops uh, trip up to Pearl Lakes, there's like a huge thunderstorm one night, and he goes outside and he's trying to like tie something down or like. Uh, just make sure that things are okay. And he sees in a flash of lightning this, what he describes as like nine foot tall looking owl figure, like an owl man kind of thing. And that, that just, that silhouette that we see kind of reminded me of that, of like a flash and that, and since we just saw an actual owl, I'm just making that connection in my mind of like, you know who that is? That's Tajimura. <laughs> I'm out here watching your fishing trip. <laughs> Catherine's just out there, just being like, "Hi, hi, hi." Just being outside feel very good. What what Major Briggs is witnessing is a flash frame from the past, where when Catherine was lost in the woods, an imprint of Tajimura put itself oh, onto it? Catherine, and then this is like looking into the past a little bit. Was Tajimura her guardian angel that appeared to her and that's where she got the idea? <laughs> yeah. This could be the guardian angel, you know? The spirit of the woods, Tajimura. <laughs> <laughs> There's something to this character, Tajimura. I will use the symbol of fear to strike <laughs> into the heart of my victims. Yeah, overall, a, a pretty fun episode, I would say, to just go back and listen to what people have to say what you know their motivations are now after everything a great scene leo moved yeah leo moved leo did move it was a big moment because that that's when like the strings started coming in the soundtrack like uh oh this is bad news <laughs> no james this episode bracho what what do you have to say about that Oh what? No James this episode. No James. I, you said it before. I loved it, but... Yeah, you said it before. I thought you were just gonna be like good. <laughs> I thought you were gonna be like, it was it was good. good. <laughs> Fuck James. Get him out of we, here. We got a good um big ed scene though. It is fucking below his skull below tie. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like the whole my favorite part, other than the the ending, was <laughs> this like the intro and into the um the spread of this wake that they were having or, you know, like the Mm -hmm. aftermath, just showing all this fricking food. Yummy. Oh, this yum, yum food (laughs) is devil eggs, dude. Whatever that brown thing is up there. What the fuck is that? Uh, So much brown. And I love it. A big big loaf. Yeah. Garlic loaf. Garlic loaf. Garlic loaf. Biscuits. Pie. Dude, those biscuits are so shittily fucking cooked. Biscuits. What the fuck are those? Are those like street dishes? Danishes, yeah. Let me look at it. With lemons in the middle? Yeah. Go, go back to it. Look go like back to it. Capers or something in the middle. No, there's like there's like the raisins. Low cook- row. They're raisins. I was gonna say, are those cookies? No. They're no. They're like a croissant or like a you know, like a puff pastry or like, Danish. Like, like oh, okay, yeah, I see that now. Cream oh. cheese or what have you. Yeah, some Danish. There's like the lemon or orange slices on the middle yeah. plate with 
parsley. Like, get the get that the fuck out of here. It doesn't need to be there. Okay, look at those. <laughs> do you see those salt and pepper shakers? Those gold little butt, yeah, those butt plugs there? Yeah. It's got like For three plug. grains of salt and four grains of pepper in them. Yep. <clears throat> and those biscuits yeah, up there. Salt and pepper biscuits look good. Yeah, but no, the so, celery got terrible. leaves. The celery still got leaves, dude. Well, the biscuits. Oh, those are parsley, Rancho. That's parsley. On top of the celery, I was gonna say celery don't look like that. What's More this? Uh, what's this gold watch guy bringing in Surprise. here? Surprise! Like Surprise! Brown Betty or something? That's not so, a pry. Really pry. I think that's not a pry. They already put down a pry. It's not a pry. Oh god! You can have multiple. Oh. <laughs> that's <laughs> a fucking Sarah's cream right there. <laughs> Just now turn I got to the Undertaker gotta... real quick. <laughs> I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> She's remembering Leland. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, almost. Oh, no, close, close. Just wait. Oh, oh. Thought she was gonna do it right there. You, you will find your moment. <laughs> if you build it, they will come. You're building the opportunity. Here we go. Here we go. Nope. She was looking up. Yeah, she's looking up at him. It's got to be. Oh, that was oh. it. Oh. oh, that was it. Yeah, the eye flutter. Wait. Yeah, that was it. Uh -huh. We got it. We did we it. Got it the important stuff. And then. Was... Nadine thinks people are looking at her underwear in her <laughs> shoes. That's such a weird thing to say. Could you imagine saying that at, a, at somebody's like wake or like after a funeral, being like, "Hey, you see my underwear? Are my, my shoes. shoes really shiny? Can you see out my skirt?" And then people are like looking, like, "Okay, no, just no, just fucking stop." Like how this episode just kind of got us comfy again. After being really not comfy last episode, got us all comfy again. After the last few, where, like, you know, Leland yeah. had that horrible, violent episode where he, like, beats up yep. Maddie and stuff, and then yep. the yep. aftermath mm -hmm. of that, like, oh my building, god. Building, building, now we're, now we're back to, to the good old peaks. Peaks. Just hanging out with, with the bros. Speaking. 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 Um, so that's pretty much all we have to say about it. I mean, unless you guys want to say more other than, you know, it's Stilgar's great steer head, Bolo. Good. Bolo yeah. Tony Brown Town, dude. Loved Look, it. Guys, I don't know that you understand. He is the naive of his siege, siege Tabor. And he's going to, he's going to walk without rhythm as to not attract the worm. He is he going to be siege, dude? He will teach you the from it ways. Muad'Dib. We will call you Muad'Dib. Where's the still suit, though? Is it underneath that big suit? Right now, he doesn't need his still suit. This is when he's... This that is, is his when still suit. No, just imagine him putting those those uh, horns up his nose and he's like, that's part of the <laughs> still suit. His, his, <laughs> his still, his still like, suit is the same pattern as the shirt. <laughs> he just pulls a little tube out of like his collar and stuffs it in his nose. <laughs> Ah, oh, there we go, honey. That's better. Um, yeah, do you have anything else to add about this episode? No. no just comfy. More. I liked it. Looking forward to Milford Brothers uh, round two. <laughs> Milford Brimley, dude. <laughs> Milford Brimley. Oh, we got this disheveled guy. Yeah, I forgot to mention this moment. Oh, his... He's spiraling out into his World War Two, or no, his Civil War. By uh, this is arc. <laughs> Civil War arc. You remember that? Yeah, actually, yes, I do. Yeah. Is this like the That's... is the moment where he's like, well, I lost everything. Might as well is start this... the Civil War. <laughs> I do think I do think this is the moment where he's like, we're starting to see him spiral into that. It'll be like you know three four five episodes from now until it's like in full swing but i i seem to remember after he gets arrested he's just like yeah fuck it might as well have a mental break and pretend to be a civil war general <laughs> <laughs> that a guy now i now i like him <laughs> as, as you do i mean now i give a shit about him you know because though he's like 
He's not drug running. He doesn't give a shit. He's like he's not invincible. He's not invincible anymore. He's fallible. He's, <laughs> he's kissing Tajimura toes. You've seen God bleed. You've seen Ben Horn humbled. <laughs> and now he's like his stogie's getting a little shorter too. It's not like a, you know, he's not picking one out of his pocket and like laying. Hey man, don't talk about a man's stogie like that. Hey, hey, I'm just saying it's been a running gag with him. He's always picking one out of his pocket and lighting it. Now he's oh, yeah. disheveled, so he's yeah, out of sorts. Stogie length, dude. Now it's an it's accurate. A we know he's been there for at least a couple hours smoking that one. Oh, dude. you gotta think about how long your stogie is, dude. <laughs> and fucking Bobby's looking like Henry Hill from Goodfellas, <laughs> like just Karen. <laughs> just yelling. Where are the drugs, Karen? Let's get some ice cream, Karen. Let's get some ice cream, Audrey. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we'll just end it there. Um, we'll be back with the next episode called oh, Masked yeah. Ball. Dude, huh? I know Masked Ball. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know. I don't. That's why I'm asking the question. You know. I really don't. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Hit that like <laughs> button if you know. Tell me what it is in the comments, please. I don't know. He, he knows. <laughs>